Our Revelation reading for today comes from chapters 21 and 22. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing each fruit, its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and their name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It has been such a joy to work with you on the book of Revelation for these past few months, to be able to explore it with our good a theologian, biblical scholar, Dr. Craig Kester from Luther Seminary, to be able to see some of the things that uh, are important to that book of the book of Revelation. I know that uh, our theme has been in the world is about to change. And I'm sure you've been asking, well, what is going to change? And I heard recently um, the person, actually Bill Moyer, speaking about Joseph Campbell, the great person who understood the whole notion of myth and how important our stories are as God's people or as a people of a nation. We all have stories. And the question was asked of Joseph Campbell, well, how can we go about changing this world? And he said, change the story. I think that's what we have as the people of God. We have a story of Jesus Christ that we have to share with our world. And quite honestly, the story that's told, especially about the book of Revelation in our world today, is one that is very pessimistic, one that is very fatalistic, and one that has been usurped in this movement that we call Christian nationalism today, that's leading to many things that are very destructive in our society. The book banning, the downing of public education and teachers, uh, the way that some are arguing that the government has to enforce, enforce very conservative Christian laws. These things are very concerning and it comes from a misinterpretation of the book of Revelation. And I've shared with you about that previously. And Dr. Kester's book deals with it in his early chapters and as well as the video that we saw together. All these things will remain here with you. I see there's still a couple copies of Dr. Kester's book out there and I hope that you'll buy it today and take it home and maybe read bits and pieces of it and try to understand more about what the book of Revelation is about. 
I see the book of Revelation as a witness of John of Patmos to the seven churches that he was writing to, to show them, first of all, that the story of God from the beginning has continued through Jesus, that Jesus is certainly a fulfillment and a, a, a way of telling the story of God from beginning to the end. But there are some things particularly new and unique about Jesus that when you study John's word and you realize that two-thirds of it is basis or reference to something in the Old Testament, that's very exciting. But then the more exciting part is to see what John has added from his sense of who Jesus is and what that means for us as a people of God. One of the things I hope for you is that perhaps you will have captured some of the images of the book of Revelation. And whenever you sit down with somebody who says, well, you know, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, and it's all shown right there in that book of Revelation, you might say, yeah, Revelation deals with a lot of evil, but I want you to know that I also see Revelation dealing with a lot of the glory and the power of how God is changing the world through you and through me. I think that is what gives me hope to continue to work with this great book of John of Patmos that in many ways also amplifies some of the great stories of Jesus and the struggles of the early Christians to be a witness to Christ in our world. So I hope that you'll latch on to a couple of these images and be able to talk to others about it. And if you, all, you should also know that if you'd like a copy of the sermons that I've developed for this series, which are often very different than what I do here on Sunday morning because Saturday night God purifies all my thinking in dreams. Um, but I hope, and also Pastor Melanie's beautiful sermon and uh, Debbie's beautiful sermon, that you'll take those and perhaps be able to read them and study them and think about them and come to a deeper understanding of this beautiful book. You can get them all uh, through your wonderful administrator, Kristen. But anyway, I hope that you'll have a couple of these images that you might talk about and you'll be able to contrast them. Think about today, this beautiful image of heaven coming to earth, the new Jerusalem, adorned as a bride, adorned as a bride for her husband. We know that uh, weddings have always been a significant part of our culture because weddings say that there's still a future in this couple that's coming together that perhaps they will be able to bless us with children or a beautiful relationship however they can possibly do it. God is a, the God of the future in weddings. And we have this beautiful image of God's, of the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. And the book of Revelation uses the imagery of Ezekiel and adds some other things to try to help to show what this new Jerusalem is like. You know, Jerusalem for the people of Israel was a very significant place. It's where the temple was, where they said God was present. The people of Israel knew that it had been destroyed several times, and even including recently, before in 70 AD, just before 30 years or so before John wrote this vision. The pain was still in the hearts and minds of the people of that time that the city of Jerusalem had been destroyed. And so John creates a new way of seeing Jerusalem, metaphorically, to open up that God is still 
working in this world with the good news and the grace of Almighty God. That beautiful, powerful image of where we always seem to end up in the book of Revelation, back in worship with God, that gives us a place where we can be energized and filled with the Holy Spirit to go forth into the world and to proclaim the good news of Jesus. That image is one that you can hold on to. And you can also then contrast it with the woman harlot, or uh, as it's also referred to, and I think in a very sexist way, the whore of Babylon previously. That beautiful bride of the new Jerusalem stands in contrast to all the evil and the challenges that evil and the ugliness that is created in our world. God is a God of redemption, a God who continues to invite, a God who continues to seek ways of justice in our world through you and me as we tell the story of how God is creating something new here in our midst. The wonderful thing is that we can use this for our sense of mission in the world. As you think about the ministry and the ways that you want to serve this community, I hope that you'll see, you have seen in our study of the book of Revelation, a tremendous insight into what it means to be a disciple of Jesus in this world and to be able to invite others into the, our holy places into what God has blessed us with. As you're looking at how to utilize your sight, recognize that in the imagery of the New Jerusalem, there are 12 gates that are there. And the astonishing thing is that those gates are open 24-7 for all the people of the world to come in. That would have been astonishing for the people of that time to hear that because they were used to the city gates going down to protect them. But in God's new Jerusalem, there is no need. We're constantly inviting in those people around us, our neighbors, to find ways to receive the love and mercy of God, to counteract the evil and the misery and the fatalism that is in our world today. There's so much more I wish I could say about this wonderful, wonderful story of what God is doing in our world. But I know with your work with Pastor Peter and others as you go forward in here and as you continue ex to explore other of the great stories of Scripture, you'll continue to see how God is calling each and every one of you as his servants in this world to use your gifts and talents to make a difference, to make a difference, to be able to tell the story about how the world is about to change. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.